Dear students, welcome to another video. Hope you are doing okay and ready for this session of learning. This video is on BMAT Section 2 Reaction Rates. Let us now move on to the learning objectives. Here are a brief summary which you should know for the exam. Let's go. The rate of reaction is the change in the amount of a reacted or product per unit time. Reaction rates are therefore determined by measuring the time dependence of some property that can be related to reactant or product amounts. Rates of reactions that consume or produce gaseous substances, for example, are conveniently determined by measuring changes in volume or pressure. For reactions involving one or more colored substances, rates may be monitored via measurements of light absorption. For reactions involving aqueous electrolytes, rates may be measured via changes in the solution's conductivity. For reactants and products in solution, their relative amounts, concentrations, are conveniently used for purposes of expressing reaction rates. If we measure the concentration of hydrogen peroxide, H2O2, in an aqueous solution, we find that it changes slowly over time as the H2O2 decomposes, according to the equation shown below. Now, let's analyze rates of reaction in the context of a graphical plot shown below. This graph shows a plot of concentration versus time for a 1.00m solution of H2O2. The rate at any instant is equal to the opposite of the slope of a line tangential to this curve at that time. Tangents are shown at t equals 0 hours, initial rate, and at t equals 10 hours, instantaneous rate at that particular time. Factors affecting rate of reaction. The rate of a reaction depends on the nature of the participating substances. Reactions that appear similar may have different rates under the same conditions, depending on the identity of the reactants. For example, when small pieces of the metals iron and sodium are exposed to air, the sodium reacts completely with air overnight, whereas the iron is barely affected. The active metals calcium and sodium both react with water to form hydrogen gas and a base. Yet calcium reacts at a moderate rate, whereas sodium reacts so rapidly that the reaction is almost explosive. The state of subdivision of the reactants. Except for substances in the gaseous state or in solution, reactions occur at the boundary, or interface, between two phases. Hence, the rate of a reaction between two phases depends to a great extent on the surface contact between them. A finely divided solid has more surface area available for reaction than does one large piece of the same substance. Thus, a liquid will react more rapidly with a finely divided solid than with a large piece of the same solid. For example, large pieces of iron react slowly with acids. Finely divided iron reacts much more rapidly. Figure 12.6. Large pieces of wood smolder, smaller pieces burn rapidly, and sawdust burns explosively. Temperature of the reactants. Chemical reactions typically occur faster at higher temperatures. Food can spoil quickly when left on the kitchen counter. However, the lower temperature inside of a refrigerator slows that process so that the same food remains fresh for days. We use a burner or hot plate in the laboratory to increase the speed of reactions that proceed slowly at ordinary temperatures. In many cases, an increase in temperature of only 10 degrees centigrade will approximately double the rate of a reaction in a homogeneous system. Concentrations of the reactants. The rates of many reactions depend on the concentrations of the reactants. Rates usually increase when the concentration of one or more of the reactants increases. For example, calcium carbonate, CaCO3, deteriorates as a result of its reaction with the pollutant sulfur dioxide. The rate of this reaction depends on the amount of sulfur dioxide in the air. Figure 12.7. The presence of a catalyst. Hydrogen peroxide solutions foam when poured onto an open wound because substances in the exposed tissues act as catalysts, increasing the rate of hydrogen peroxide's decomposition. However, in the absence of these catalysts, for example, in the bottle in the medicine cabinet, complete decomposition can take months. A catalyst is a substance that increases the rate of a chemical reaction by lowering the activation energy without itself being consumed by the reaction. Activation energy is the minimum amount of energy required for a chemical reaction to proceed in the forward direction. The catalyst increases the reaction rate by providing an alternative pathway or mechanism for the reaction to follow. Figure 12.8 Catalysis will be discussed in greater detail later in this chapter as it relates to mechanisms of reactions. Collision theory is based on the following postulates. 1. The rate of a reaction is proportional to the rate of reactant collisions. Reaction rate collisions time 2. The reacting species must collide in an orientation that allows contact between the atoms that will become bonded together in the product 3. The collision must occur with adequate energy to permit mutual penetration of the reacting species' valence shells, so that the electrons can rearrange and form new bonds and new chemical species. If the collision does take place with the correct orientation, there is still no guarantee that the reaction will proceed to form carbon dioxide. Every reaction requires a certain amount of activation energy for it to proceed in the forward direction, yielding an appropriate activated complex along the way. As always thanks for watching this video on reaction rates. The next video is on energetics. 